Hi everyone, my name is Sandra. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video, you guessed it, is my May bullet journal setup for the entire month. And I am going back to doing some painting in my bullet journal. So again, my current bullet journal that I am using is the Rhodia Rhodia Rama a soft cover notebook and the pages are really soft so they will not hold up to paint especially acrylic paint and so I wanted to go ahead and do something different and this actually reminds me of one of my bullet journal setups for January I'm gonna link that video for you guys because I really liked how that one turned out and this one reminds me of it a little bit but of course it is spring themed so I'm doing this particular uh, acrylic painting on my Strathmore Wind Power Smooth Bristle Board. The paper I'm using is 11 by 14 and I did get that from Michaels. And the paints I'm using are the Basics brand from Michaels as well. And the yellow one, <laughs> I actually didn't have any acrylic so I ended up using my gouache um, yellow jelly cup paint and it worked fine. So you can see that I'm adding it here. And this painting took me about, I think it was about two and a half hours um, between waiting for it to dry. So it was a long time, but of course I have made this video quite a bit faster so you don't have to wait along with me. My inspiration for this particular painting came from a notebook that I saw on Amazon. I'm going to just link the picture here for you so you guys can check it out. Um, I'm going to write all the information in the description box if you actually want to purchase that journal. Um, but I really liked the cover and it was kind of the inspiration and I knew I wanted something floral for May, but I didn't want your conventional floral. I didn't want to draw any florals. Not that I don't enjoy that, I just wanted to do something I haven't done in a long time and this kind of felt like the perfect thing. So I did layer a lot and I found that every time I would let my paint dry I would always go back and change the color a little bit and I mean that's okay because with acrylic the paint is very forgiving and it isn't that long of a dry time to be quite honest. It um, Within the two and a half hours I think I might have changed the color of every flower maybe two or three times. Once I added the main floral components to this painting, I did um, kind of go in and make a few more details. So on this fern, for instance, you can see that I'm adding white, I'm adding some yellow in there, and then on the red flowers, I wanted to have some more accents. And I really also wanted to change the colors of the green stems. So for instance, the fern is like this beautiful yellow green spring green, and then some of the flowers have variegated um, dark green accents and then also some like teal and turquoise colors so I really wanted to make it quite a bit different between all of the colors I didn't want it to just be exactly the same and very monochromatic and I almost felt like the blue space behind needed to be filled up and I think um, in the end it turned out good it's it's always funny so while I was working on this painting this thought kept going through my mind and it said trust the process and you'll hear that a lot in you know self-improvement or personal development but also in art because at the beginning when you first start a project you don't really know what the end result is going to be and at the same time it might look like crap before it gets better and I mean that works for watercolor it works for oil it doesn't really matter what medium you're working with as long as you can layer even when I'm doing a project in colored pencil crayon sometimes I'm like oh is this really gonna turn out all right and in the end you'll surprise yourself you just have to trust the process and believe that everything will work out good and that it will look wonderful and beautiful in the end so here you can see that I am adding in those little details. So with acrylic paints, 
you have to really be careful and make sure that the previous layer is dry underneath unless of course you are trying to blend because I did notice that that blue paint really it was dry when I added all the details on top but it really showed through the other colors because they were just that much lighter than that dark blue and so I did layer quite a few um, layers just to kind of brighten up the color so I went in again with that kind of orange and like red fern and I had to add a lot of red and a lot of yellow to get it to the way I liked so then at the last final step here so you again you can see I'm still layering all of these blues on here now but my very final step was to put some white paint all over and I meant to just kind of make little spots with my paintbrush but I ended up doing the little trick where you wet your paintbrush uh, with water and then you tap it all over the, pa the painting and that works great if you were trying to do stars but don't do it if you're trying to get the, the effect of like I don't know fireflies or little glowing lights <laughs> because it isn't the same some of the white spots went on top of my flowers and I didn't like it so I had to kind of dab it off with a paper towel and then I just went in with my paintbrush and made some spots behind all of the flowers and that will wrap up the painting and we can get on to the bullet journal All right, you guys, so we're ready for the bullet journal. Again, I'm using my Rodia Rodia Rama dot grid notebook, and I just wanted to kind of show the cover I'm using. I did show this in my bullet journal setup video, but this is a custom notebook cover that my sister actually made for me. She has a business called Doll Leatherworks, and I will leave everything linked down below if you guys want to check it out. She can make anything custom made in leather, and I didn't mention this before, but it's almost um, like a family-run business, sort of. Uh, my dad used to do leather work, so uh, he lived in the country, and he made saddles and stirrups and holsters and wallets and all kinds of things for everybody living out in the country and who had horses and cattle and stuff so my sister kind of inherited the ability and the want to work with leather and I think it's really neat so here you will see me cut out my little piece of my painting that I did kind of felt bad to cut it up but at the same time that was its purpose and I did also get a corner round punch again all of the products I use in this video will be linked down below but I used the corner round punch and it was recommended for my January bullet journal setup and I love it it was one of the best purchases I made so I also used my Posca uniball paint pen and that one was the 0.9 to 1.3 millimeter tip sometimes with the 0.7 millimeter I find that it doesn't work very well and with this one I had no trouble at all it just held up so good 
and I mean it probably doesn't hurt that I used it over dried acrylic paint I find it really does depend what pen or what type of marker you use underneath of it because it won't always hold up to a water-based marker like a Tombow for instance so something permanent is a lot better so I did actually use the extra fine tip here the 0.7 millimeter to write out this little calendar and you guys know that when I do my monthly bullet journal setups I don't ever do this um, I wanted to minimize my journal a little bit but still make it beautiful and efficient because I really prefer the type of like functional spreads over artsy spreads but at the same time this is pretty artsy I think. one thing I should say is I did get inspiration from Journal Away. I'll link her channel because her art is out of this world amazing and also from Helen Colebrook because she is one of my favorite bullet journalers and journalists period because she just does things different than I've seen on YouTube and Instagram and I like different and her spreads are pretty functional. So moving on to this next spread, this is of course my calendar and I used quite a few different variety of markers and pens throughout this setup. So my black pens that I actually used this time were my Marvi La Pen Technical Drawing Pen and I think I mostly used the 0.4 or the 0.4 and the 0.6 so um, I think Secura Pigma Micron doesn't offer those sizes and if they do they're harder to get and so the blue on top I used my Secura Koi Coloring Brush Pen in number 36 blue and then I used my Signal Uniball Broad White Gel Pen to write the days of the week on top of it. For some reason, I really prefer using that pen over the Posca paint markers when I'm just using marker in my journal. I don't really know why, but that's just my preference. So you'll see here that I also used my new Stabilo .68 brush markers because I haven't really used them in a setup yet. And I just, like I said, I used a variety of different markers. So here I'm using my Art and Fly brush markers. These are actually the dual tip. So they do have two different size brush markers on each end. I'm using the smaller one here. And um, these are actually a really great pen. The brush tip holds up well on both sides. But I feel like the small end might be a bit more floppy than the large end. But these are some of the best brush markers I've tried. The only downside is they only come in 15 colors, which is why the Tombows still win out no matter what. So here I decided to take some of my painting and because the washi tape that I'm using has little hearts on it, by the way that washi tape is from Simply Gilded, I decided to cut out a little heart with my <laughs> floral painting just to kind of give it a little bit of a scrapbook theme since I'm already cutting out pieces of my painting and gluing them in my bullet journal to start with. Moving to the next page now, this is where I do my list calendar and I like to have both types of calendars because I see things differently in both calendars and I do sometimes use them for different things. So I decided to break it up instead of having a full calendar page. The left side is the calendar and the right hand side is my monthly stuff to do. So I always like having a monthly task list that I can just write stuff that wouldn't necessarily fall under a specific date. So it's interesting to note that on my bullet journal, I still highlight the Sunday start date. Um, I think I had a conversation with one of my subscribers a long time ago about why I liked Sunday as a start instead of Monday. And oh my goodness, I think the truth be told, I've kind of shifted over to a Monday start um, since all of my planners are like that. But for some reason, I still do it in my bullet journal, which is completely messes me up. So the right page was Ideas Live Here, which was inspiration from Journal Away, and that will be where I put all of my video ideas and ideas for stickers and also ideas for writing my blog. 
This spread here is my weight tracker. So if you have seen a few of my past um, monthly setups, you'll notice that I didn't include a weight tracker and that's because I was tracking it in my happy planner and I think because the happy planner is just if you don't flip to that particular page it just doesn't catch your eye or show up so I had to put it back in my bullet journal so I would actually track it because yeah I stopped tracking it and I actually need to be able to flip through each page and I don't always do that in my happy planner so I decided to add it back in here again and this next page is my dream log so usually I only need one page for my dream log and I decided to include the scrapbook feel again with a little piece of my painting and honestly I haven't remembered any of my dreams probably for the last probably since my daughter was born to be honest so it might not even really get used I think the last couple of months I've maybe remembered two or three of my dreams but when I was pregnant with my daughter yeah it, I could fill pages so this one is pretty boring actually I'm just writing doodle a day at the top of the page and I pick a theme that I want to draw so it might be flowers this month and I'll just do a drawing of a different flower or whatever something different each day of the month and it turns out pretty cool and I do post the completed work on Instagram so now this inspiration is from Helen Colebrook and she does a page called reasons to be proud and also gratitude so I haven't done a gratitude page in a long time and I like how Helen does it because she writes the title in the middle of the page and then she writes one line a day all around it and the finished product looks really cool and um, I'm really excited to fill this out again because like I said I haven't done it in a long time so these next few pages are my trackers. Of course, I have my habit tracker and then my mood tracker. And my habit tracker is very much um, Helen Colebrook style. And it's just, she has a certain way of writing her titles and it's almost a very upright but delicate style, if you know what I mean. And I did that in blue and then I wrote all of the habits I wanna track on the left-hand side and the numbers at the top and um, I know sometimes people don't like to switch their journal to the side like this and write like across the page instead of like up and down but I don't mind it and it does give your journal visual interest just to kind of change things up but again I'm one of those people that gets bored so quickly and I love change I love change in my bullet journal especially and I think that's why I haven't given up on it I have noticed that lately there's a trend a lot of people are kind of giving up on their bullet journal or taking a break and I can't see myself not ever using my bullet journal it's too good to be able to make up your, whatever you need it to be and I really like using it for whatever I want so um, I don't see myself giving it up anytime uh, not even in, in the far future but um, I really use it a lot for art and I think that's what um, I really like about it because I'll, since I've had kids, and, and this has probably been the last seven years or so, since I've had both of my kids, I haven't had a lot of time to do art. And so something simple like these projects I do in my bullet journal are, you know, ease, more easy to complete and to do, and I enjoy it. But the projects I used to do when I was younger, um, to be honest, usually they would stem from emotional things that happened in my life. Like when my dad passed away, I had all of these beautiful, gorgeous, like pencil drawing, um, kind of like colored pencil drawing pictures. And I did probably five or six of them. And it's just like an outpouring of grief on the page. And I spent hours, I would spend, you know, 12 hours doing one picture. So I just don't have that time anymore so something like this is a little bit easier for me to accomplish and also to complete so as you can see here I just did all of these like flower doodles that kind of went with my theme for the month and I picked some various colors so I've got um, a Tombow in there and that one is 993 I've got my art and fly green and orange and I also threw in a Pentel food a touch that's the dark kind of navy color blue and then the next page is my grocery list. 
So basically for the weekly page. I used to just do a weekly that would include groceries and events and next week in notes and I didn't want to do that this time because I've, I'm on this scheduling track where I over scheduled myself too many things to do if I have too much room. So I'm cutting it back down to weeklies in my bullet journal, leaving myself very little room so that I have to limit myself because I could write a task list or a to-do list that could go on for days and I just have so much to do and I'm really trying to schedule myself better. So that is why I am doing it that way. And so here you will see I'm cutting out all of these little pieces of paper. Why? I am doing another little scrapbook project. This one is going to be a flower. So I decided to cut out the middle part of the flower and then all of the individual petals from my painting. And then, yeah, I glued them all down. But instead of putting glue on the back side of the painting part, I just put a little bit of my Tombow glue adhesive on the page and then just popped the little pieces on top of that. And it actually worked fine. Um, the glue is sticky, but it's not um, too sticky. And you can kind of rub it off with your finger if it does get everywhere. So it's kind of cute. <laughs> it worked out. So as I was saying, this is my weekly setup page and I decided to do the boxes on like towards the middle of the page and um, I'm not sure how I'm going to work out with the room because I do write pretty long lists and I preferred my dailies because I didn't want limitations. I wanted each page to breathe but at the same time I need to be able to be at a point where I'm doing more work rather than sitting on my bullet journal all day just planning. So um, I'm gonna try this for a while and if it's not working, I will change it. And I think that's one of the biggest things that we can do as bullet journalists is if something's not working for you, why not change it? Because the whole point of the bullet journal system is to be ever changing. You use it for what you need it for. And if it's not helping you, it's not working. And the bullet journal is meant to be a tool for you to get more productive with your life and not less productive. So that is my reasoning. And you'll see here that I've included a meal plan, which I desperately need on my weekly page, as well as a weekly task list for items that aren't scheduled. And then the last page in this spread, you'll see that I skipped over three pages and those are for the rest of the weeklies in May. And I finally decided to do um, like a month in review page. Again, this is inspiration taken from Journal Away. And her name is Anna, by the way, if you guys are curious. And um, I really, I noticed that, I think it's been the last month or two that I've been pretty vague with my goals. And I've been doing a lot of uh, research and stuff and personal development and personal growth. And I want to get down and dirty with my goals, so to speak. I want to get really in depth and, um, just figure out what's going to make everything better and maybe improve my life more. So I wanted to include a tracker page here, something that I could write some notes in to do a review. And I think it'll be really good. And I'll let you guys know in the next month how this one turned out. And if it's great, I will do it again. So that is it for this bullet journal setup. I'm going to flip through the entire journal for you guys in real time so you can see what it looks like in its entirety. I just wanted to show this cover one last time. I love this horse that's engraved in the front. Horses and unicorns are my favorite thing ever. So if you guys are curious, please make sure to go and check out my sister's Instagram and Facebook page. She has a portfolio and all of her information will be listed there. 
that completes this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a big thumbs up. Also, if you're new here, I would love if you would consider subscribing. And last but not least, click on that bell button to be notified every time I upload a new video. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.